What are the two things that compose, and this is gonna be science class, what are the two things that make up power? Like literally I was in this room like every day for like 15 hours, just like, it was, it was like trash, like this was so dirty. We're doing our mobility like range of motion test, so like we're seeing what their hip extension looks like, what their strength looks like, and what their active range of motion looks like, and then trying to figure out like where do we need to improve and how do we improve it. As far as it goes down? Yeah. Actively, actively, come on. Without your left. Sorry buddy. Okay, straighten that leg out. I got fired already. <laughs> There's two adaptations that are gonna happen over the next couple months. One is physical, one is technical. Which one do you think is more important? So I'm gonna I'm gonna say for you guys, it's a 70% physical adaptation that's gonna lead to faster sprint times and a 30% technical adaptation. So we've all been taught you need to look a certain way when you run. Now that's part of it, but the only thing that really matters is what? What's the outcome we want? Faster with increased power. So in order to increase my power, if my technical abilities don't aid in that, then it's worthless. Our second most important goal is increase our technical abilities so that we can produce more power on the ground. Okay, we'll add a little bit onto that. Does that make sense? So what we're gonna do today, three things. Number one, we're gonna run a 40. Everyone turn around, look at those GPS bras. Okay, look back over here. So within those GPS bras, we measure instantaneous velocity and your force velocity profile. How many teams in the world are doing this right now? Three, you guys are one of them. So we're gonna measure instantaneous velocity or force velocity when we run the 40. It's more than just your split time. I could care less if you run a five second 40 or a four four. I don't care. My job is to make whatever you're at a lot faster. And that's a promise. That's the outcome we're gonna get, okay? The second thing we're gonna do is we're doing something called a load velocity profile. Okay, so we're actually gonna identify with weight where your peak power range is. So you're gonna run a 25% body weight sled, a 50% body weight sled, 75% body weight sled. We're recording the time. Whatever we do today, we're gonna work off for the next three months. So we're gonna find what your peak power is, assign you a weight that you're gonna use for the next couple weeks, couple months, and we're gonna improve our speed by working that physical part of the equation. The last thing we're gonna do is Powerball. Okay, that's just, I think it's fun. There's no science behind that. Okay, I just think it's fun. <laughs> so we're gonna test how much power you have from, from your hips. You thought challenges were helpless or whether you can master them. And your thought on whether it's helpless or whether you can master them stem from your belief in your own mind and how you can handle adversity. So what we've done, and I'll show you guys pretty soon, is we've ranked all you guys and then we've ranked you against NFL. All right, so part of this is my scientific method. is identifying the problem, okay? Why does some improve and others don't. You guys go and train with these people, some people improve, others don't. Why? My hypothesis is that training needs to be individual. So can individual training create greater and sustained improvements, which is gonna take you to the next level, okay? Uh, number three, collect data. You guys are the data, you guys are my data. Okay, number four, analyze that data. That's what I do downstairs, analyze you guys. Five, draw a conclusion, see if it worked. It will. And then six, I'll put it on Instagram and I'll show you guys that it improved. So that's my method. So this whole school, for me, is built on that method. And then the way we're gonna learn science, partially is through the scientific method. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. It's either a big coincidence or these guys worked extremely hard. So I'm gonna assume that these guys worked extremely hard based on what we saw with them. And two of my favorite guys, like they just never stop working. They're hilarious. JJ sucks at video games, but <laughs> You know, they, they deserve it and I'm super excited for them. I'm ready, ready to watch them just ball out. You know, it's not a surprise, like it's kind of weird because when you work so hard, you expect these things. And we worked hard for them, they worked hard for us. We kind of expected success. It's all we talked about. We didn't really talk about this not happening. We only talked about what are the possibilities if, you know, if everyone works hard and does everything the way we're supposed to, we just talked about what's gonna happen. Everyone's gonna make the 53 man roster and ball out. and. We're gonna watch them on ESPN. So I don't have time to watch a full football game. So if I don't catch you on the highlights, then there's an issue. So. <laughs> you caught your boy Joey B, Joe Burrow, on, yeah, yeah. on the highlights, of course, with his scramble. So yeah. how dope was that being his speed coach, seeing him burst out of the pocket dope. like that? That was dope. I, again, I expected it. Like, I knew his velocity capabilities were just as high as everyone else's in our camp. You just look at him, you don't think he's fast, but he has the same power, same velocity as some of the receivers. He kept saying, I'm gonna shock people with my speed. Like, they don't know what's coming. And of course he did, but they really don't know what's coming because he's going to beat somebody fast on the outside. 
and everyone's gonna go crazy and it's gonna be expected so I'm, pr I'm super excited about that here at the together ship you're gonna see a lot of sport you're gonna see a lot of play you're gonna see a lot of performance you're gonna see a lot of world-class performance but what we really need the world to understand is that in our full circle and in what we do as a whole we talk about mindfulness we preach recovery, we talk about nutrition. As much as we talk about the academics, and you see the athletics right now, everything is of equal importance. So they're running down there and you're watching up here basically? Yeah, so we're looking at their um, their peak speed, how many yards they, they covered. So if they start getting above like 1300, then uh, we'll cut them off. So like Luke Webb is at 1251. Once he gets to 1300, I'll cut them off. Um, yeah, but everybody's looking good today. They're thinking a little bit too much because it's day one, but. Not bad, not bad at all. It's time to go, got my green juice. I was at the other field, I was like following the kids to the baseball. I was like, wait a second. I want you to run 22 today. You're gonna run 460, so you got a chance to run 460. So we'll do two sleds to warm up, light, if, if we can. I don't know if they're gonna be on there. Then we'll go to um, dribble build up, build up the top speed, a couple flies, then you go into Excel. Then you got 460s, and then we'll go uh, flies again and see where you're at. If you can hit 21 in a fly, then I think with an Excel you can hit 22. Need that. Let me spray the camera real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you think Kayla's gonna run very fast today. How fast? 21 Southern. She wants to run 22. And if she doesn't run that, we're gonna keep running until she does. Behind your head. Yep. Your hips tucked in. There you go. Head is to the sky. There you go. So you get money. Yep. There you go. Lock it in. Tall, 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 tall. Yep, bring the hips through, bring the hips through, all the way through. Nice. Lock the hips in, lock the hips in. Pull up the motor case. I gotta show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. Choppers are throw away. Hustle the overweight. That's why they follow me, huh? They think I know the way. Cause I took control of things. What you do? 20.3, not bad. Thought she was gonna run her fastest on this one, but um, probably needs like two more to kind of like feel the groove, get the rhythm right. But it's not bad. I can tell she's not pressing yet. So yeah, pretty good though. Kayla, how was that? Let's take four minutes. Were you pressing or no? 20.3, she hit it within, she hit 20.3 within 30, I think 30 yards. So when she pushes her acceleration a little longer, we'll probably hit her top speed at like 21, a little bit further. I think if she just gets her hips higher, when she, when she comes up and just relaxes, Fine. How'd it feel? My XL was like, and I got to the end, I was just like floating, but not like. Once you get the speed, hips tall, autopilot, coast. Yeah. Yeah, it's good though. It's, we haven't run this far in a while. She's been she's been upping in volume, volume every week, so not always predictable like with their volume, but I think she'll hit probably a little bit faster on this one. I saw you went 20.3 and then you went 20.5 again. You like this, and then you went back up. She's gonna run 100. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I was kind of like, Meh. like I'm not hitting what I hit before, but then I realized I haven't taken a break off since when we start the hill. Months ago, but that also that field was slightly downhill. So like if you go to just the scoring mm -hmm. on this, I'll show you. You rank higher than half the NFL. Tough. Bless you. Throw your body out as far and as hard as you can. Okay, once I throw my body out, what do I do? Throw your body out, attack back. That's all you need to think. If I throw my body out, Attack back, my body's gonna keep going forward. All right, let's go rapid fire, let's go, who's up? Good. I know you got more than that, Kale. I know you got more than that. You're thinking too hard, stand up. What are you about to do? Stand up, all the way, all the way. What are you, stand up. Throw your shoulders. Throw your shoulders. Okay, no, this is what I want. Watch me throw my shoulders. I gotta back up, I got a bigger stride than you guys. As hard as I can, I'm throwing my shoulders. Does that make sense? You guys are you guys are doing this little baby stuff. I want you to throw your shoulders aggressively. Good, good, beautiful, beautiful. Let's go, push. Beautiful, much better. X, beautiful, beautiful. All right, here we go. These muscles. Throw your body forward. Get set. Get strong. There you go. Almost. Imagine my hand there. Beautiful. Good. Good. Now come back. Do it again. Push. Everything that's in my memory that I imagine is finally in hundred million in a year. You know I'm turned up now. <laughs> it's like I don't litter. I don't litter. 
bad on with it. Dylan got his hair flowing today. Two rounds left and we're done with speed. You should let it grow out like that. Thinking about it. Yeah. I don't have those locks like that. <laughs> Empty your brain. Just go. Just go. This is fun. This is easy. Empty that joint. Let's go. Better. Better. He's straining too much. You can only think about one thing successfully at a time. As soon as you start thinking two, you get tight. Only one thing at a time. What do you prefer they think about when they're coming off the line? For them, like for Luke, for example, all I want him to do is shoot his shoulders forward. If he can't do that, then nothing else will work. So all I want him to do is think, shoot your shoulders forward. The rest of the run is whatever to me at this point. But um, we need to get him to drive out first instead of up and out to the side. So then I started waking up at four o'clock in the morning every day. And then I'd wake up at four and I'd work out until five. And then I go back to sleep, wake up at seven. So I do that in the summer, and then I would like work out a couple times a day. So I read about Kobe doing it. Yeah, for real. Yeah, read everybody read about, read about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. go. So I, I started, I started just adopt that schedule, and then that summer I just went crazy. Went crazy, went right? Crazy. You know, same yeah. story, bro. Yeah. Same story. I didn't even know what I was doing. It was just work. Yeah. You know, it was just yeah. work. Like go to the gym three like, times a day. Yeah, I went crazy because I would, I would go that summer. I would do that in the morning. I would like run miles in the morning. Yeah. Go back to sleep, wake up, go to the gym, lift, you know, go back home, go to the boxing gym. Yeah. Run home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just like insane. Yeah. It was no it was no science no to it. It was just like go, go, yeah. go. And I went crazy that year. I literally yeah. told Matt that same story. Yeah. That same when I said I only got like three hours of sleep. Yeah. It was it was, it was wait room, eat three yeah. hours, go right back to yeah. it. Yeah. Hit the field. It was yeah. just nonstop. I was insane, Went like crazy. Yeah, and I was just so motivated. I was just so sick of being like poor, and yeah, yeah. I was sick of being like not great at something. Facts. I was just annoyed that I wasn't great. Facts. Yeah. Facts. I just woke up pissed off every day. In that year, like I stopped hanging out with people. I stopped drinking. I stopped yeah. everything. I yeah. stopped literally everything. Locked was locked in. Locked in. No girls. No locked parties. In. No friends. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like 19 and a half to. 27, yeah. not one drink, not one, and I know you don't drink now, but yeah. bro, I was, I was locked all the way, all the way up. And transit motivation, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you've been in the mud, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In, in the, the mud, mud, bro, in the mud. Living in there, yeah. he's like, nah, I gotta get about this. Bro, I would listen to This Can't Be Life mm -hmm. on repeat, you know the Jay-Z? Yeah, 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 yeah. On repeat, and just be like, this this can't be life, bro. I can't be, I can't be at this level right now. Like, I need this, I need this. You know my stories, I broke yeah, my I femur did. at St. John's. Yeah. Femur, walk. Okay. I was in a, I was in a wheelchair. I was just like pissed off every day. I yeah. couldn't walk. And just every day I would just like try to get up a little bit more, get up a little bit more. Yeah. And then I was like, how far can this go? You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. you just, at a certain point you just decide like everything else, everyone else. Fact. Don't matter. I'm just gonna go run through this wall if I have to today. Yeah. I don't care how much it hurts. Yeah. 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 It's all good. What do you think sets her apart from the group? She's consistent. She's super consistent. So even if she doesn't feel good, she's still gonna show up and she'll do plan B or plan C. But most people, as soon as they feel uncomfortable, that's the last it's time not. you see them. You don't see them again. Because mm -hmm. they, they can't handle that. They can't handle that pain. She's different because she doesn't feel pain the way we feel pain, like most people. Like Most people feel pain and they stop. She feels pain and that's like an indication to push a little bit harder. Yeah. You know, yeah. and not not too many people can do that. Like exactly. if you can do that, you're going to another level, regardless of how good you're starting at. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're average and you have that in you, then you're gonna be the goat. Like you're gonna be incredible. I think if she just keeps going at this at this rate, you're gonna see one of the best female athletes ever. Honestly, I co-sign that. Yeah, sure. ever.